Peon is one of my favorites ever. And it only could have been that way if I was able to get a hold of it physically, as the likelihood of seeking it out specifically was essentially none. So yeah, I like Kaon, as previously stated, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about why that is. My original plan for the last video was to do a bunch of topics I like talking about and get a read on what people found interest in, for the most part. It was a lot of really supportive and nice people talking about how that video helped them branch out and make some changes for themselves, and I'm super grateful to be a positive influence on people. However, if I can sway people into watching or enjoying things I like, that may be interesting too. So let's talk k -On, as I really had a lot more specific things to mention about the show. So buckle up buckaroos, and let's get to it. One of the most important things to consider in a show is its characters. I really like the main characters in the show. They each offer something unique. Each of the main characters also have some sort of counter character, you know, someone who balances the other out. There's this nice mix of balancing between the main cast. You've got hotheads, klutzes, shy slash nervous wrecks, responsible ones, and more that are always in motion. This is one of those shows that really lets the characters drive the story along, and not the other way around. For the most part, the conflict created is all self-imposed and is resolved in a really cohesive way. Before going too deep in my analysis here, I want to offer a more generalized summary of the show for those who haven't seen it yet. k is a music anime depicting the lives of high schoolers through a music club. The main cast is broken up into three groups. Firstly is the so-called protagonist, Yui, who wants to join a club but isn't especially talented in anything. She tends to be more of a klutz and is generally lazy slash airheaded. Next up is the duo of Ritsu and Mio. They are the childhood friends of the group. One is arrogant and hot-headed, while the other one is quiet and doesn't put up with shit. Finally is Mugi, who is the preppy rich girl type. She's pretty clueless with normal things, but is extremely courteous and grateful in general. So how did these forces meet? Well, Ritsu and Mio previously really wanted to form a band together. Ritsu followed through with this notion, while Mio was okay with moving on to something else. They end up finding out that the school's light music club is on the verge of being disbanded. Ritsu decides for both herself and Mio that they will join the empty club, as Ritsu will be the president by default. Mugi ends up showing up to the club room looking for the choir club, but instead wants to stick around due to Ritsu and Mio's chemistry together. The three of them set off to recruit one more member by the end of the first month of school, as if they don't get anyone, the club will have to be disbanded. As they wait for recruits to come in, Yui is out still looking for a club to join. She hears a lot about the club and gets the entirely wrong idea of what light music is. Instead of a band with guitar, drums, vocals, she's under the impression that it's light-hearted music or easy-to-play stuff. She joins before understanding that it's not easy and makes a point to quit right away. It doesn't quite work out as they wine and dine her with some tea and cake, but she eventually spits it out that she can't play anything. Due to the problem of band members, the three of them brush past that point as they just need anybody to serve as a file member. They continue to bribe her with more tea and cake to start. <sighs> we can't let this mark leave this room no matter what! To keep the club from being disbanded, we have to keep her here somehow. So good! <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to come here and gorge myself. Hey, don't sweat it. I think we should start eating snacks like this every day from now on. Aren't we drifting off topic here? <laughs> In a last ditch effort, they play something for Yui, and it hits just the right chord. Get it? I don't know what to say! It's really hard to put into words! Mm hmm. You guys aren't very good, are you? Talk about blunt! But it seemed like it uh -huh. would be a whole lot of fun to do! I decided that I'm going to join this club! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that starts the saga known as Kaon. So after the first episode or so, we have our main group established. So what next? Well, without spoiling everything, the rest of the show falls along with Yui learning and becoming a guitar expert. There are plenty of concerts and songs that are played, lots of slice of life tropes here and there. Some of those being school, beach trips, sick days, school trips, etc. 
This is one of those shows that doesn't have any major stakes or conflicts, which isn't necessarily for everyone. I, however, love a feel-good chill-out show. Within k there's plenty of bits that run throughout the show, like how their teacher is two to three-faced. She starts off being super sweet and polite, but eventually is gung-ho about outfits, cat ears, and... Screamo music. Death Devil! Ain't this half-assed watery crap these kitties we're trying to play! So I'm gonna show you bastards how it's done! It's just insane. One of the main points of conflict created is the attitudes for practicing. For being a band, they spend a lot of time drinking tea and eating cake. Even later on with more band members in stricter concerts, there's always time for tea. While some within the band love the sweets, some are more disappointed by them, until they also indulge. This is where the last of the main characters comes into play, Azusa. Throughout the two seasons and movie of k the band members go from freshmen to seniors. As they play concerts and have fun, they get the attention of their underclassmen, the most notable being Azusa, who is a passionate guitar prodigy. She's absolutely gung-ho about her guitar. When she joins after watching the band play a concert, she is awestruck and fangirling until she realizes they mostly eat snacks instead of practice. She's also disappointed initially that Yui, the guitar player, knows really nothing about the guitar and guitarists in general. Her confusion continues as she discovers each of the band members' flaws and attitudes. This culminates with their teacher slash eventual advisor, who is the biggest shock of all. What are you doing? Spit that out this instant! Forget it! Spit it out right now! So yeah, out of the main cast, Azusa has the most dramatic change. She goes from this intense, strict, and sometimes bossy player to the eventual slightly more mellowed out, more rounded character by the end, which leads to graduation at the end of the series. In terms of the main cast, I will have to say that Mugi is my favorite character. She's just so sweet and nice. She is the sunshine character for the most part. Without her, there are many things that wouldn't be possible. The band forming with tea and cake at the ready, the multiple vacation homes that are being borrowed, the influence on the music store's pricing. But my favorite aspect of her character is the curious side. She wants to learn new things and experience new stuff. Literally in the first episode, she mentions how she's dreamed of being asked if she wants fries at the McDonald's they meet at. She's lured into the band since Mio and Ritsu are so close. She wants that kind of relationship. I mean, there's an entire episode where she is purposely trying to be a klutz, so one of the band members will whack her on the head. That may be some sort of ulterior motive, wink wink. And those traits carry on to the college set manga too, which that set of stories are pretty good. Anyways, last main thing show-wise I want to mention is the moe aspect. Moe is cute, essentially. The show is one of the driving forces for the cute girls doing cute things trope, which can be found pretty often in this show. From the big eyes and rounded faces, the ample fan servicey type of activities and costumes, those being swimsuits, maid outfits, etc. So if that's something you like, then k is a great thing to check out. If not, there's still good elements to the show here. You've got a great soundtrack, funny characters and situations, some gorgeous animation at times, a nice soul overall. It's essentially the whole slice of life element zoomed out. Instead of a bunch of scenes from a year in school, there's the whole high school experience from afar. You have some school clubs, talent shows, festivals, holidays, the whole package. But there's more to the show than just the anime. I want to put you all on the part of Kaon I enjoy the absolute most. That is the music. So, unfortunately, I cannot play any of Kaon's songs without having this video demonetized. But if you end up at the point where you've watched the show and enjoyed the opening and closing songs, as well as, you know, the concert ones, you have to check out the various albums released. There are several original song packs, which are based on the various characters. Those are bops for sure. There's also the individual singles for the extended opening, closing, and other songs within the anime. My favorite of all of them is the two disc slash cassette mega album. This album has 26 tracks, which has a lot of them being duplicates or intros, but this is all the greatest hits. If you're going to listen to any music without watching the show, this is where to start. My favorite element of the album outside of the tracks themselves is the context in which they are presented. 
In one of the last episodes of the show, we see the band get together in the club room for one of the final times. They set up the cassette player and hit record. They go through all their songs in a row with intermissions on some as they have to stop and start the player over and over again. It really is a charming way to present these songs in that context. I personally own this CD, but not the cassette version, which would probably add to the aesthetic. But speaking of CDs, many of the tracks or openings, etc. are available on CD. When I was going through my phase of Kaon music, I ended up buying a ton of CDs. Like I have a big stack of them. I feel like owning some sort of merch from a property you like almost enhances the value of that show. It's the whole eye of the beholder mentality, and I am no exception. After importing all the CDs from Japan, I wanted more. I even found a few sellers for figures too and bought more than I should have. I'm not going to include them all here as they're in storage for the most part, but here's a couple good ones. Also, there's a set of car models for the show too? I'm not much of a car guy, so I can't really be invested in that sort of thing, but it is pretty funny seeing weird collaborations such as that. Also, my last video about physical media, some people mentioned that they don't really have access or room to a lot of physical media. So the good news is about the music of Kaon is a lot of it is available via Spotify under the Ho Kago Tea Time title. I think it's how you pronounce it. I'll, I'll leave that on screen. I believe you can also find this on other services too, which means you won't have to be locked out of having all the discs to enjoy it, which is a big plus to me. My final note here is in regards on how to watch this show ideally. I was lucky enough to get this within an anime collection purchase, so I have it on DVD. And when I originally watched it, it was also available on Hulu. As of now, it's not available on Hulu or on like the main hub for anime being Crunchyroll. But it is on a competitor service, High Dive, which is a cheaper per month than Crunchyroll. The only issue that remains for those who use streaming primarily is it might not be there forever. If you happen to either see this video in the distant future or forget about Kaon until later, it could be off their service entirely and possibly unwatchable legally. I'm also talking about just within the United States. It could be completely different if you live in another country with different corporate licenses, which leads me back to the physical media debate. I would urge you, if you want a copy of Kaon, to try to seek it out. There are DVD and Blu-ray versions available, but they do cost a bit more than a monthly subscription. You could get the series for about $50 it seems right now, which could also change in the future too. But I would personally say it's worth the money for the sake of not having to find it or being at the mercy of your internet provider. Because what's worse than not being able to watch something is being stuck waiting for your video to buffer endlessly, or your ad blocker making it next to impossible for the player to continue every 5 minutes. But hey, that's just me. Thank you all for watching. If you watched my previous video, thank you for checking this one out too. Hopefully you enjoyed it like the other one. I'm thinking of either doing some more anime related content going forward, or maybe going back to some video game stuff. If y'all have any strong feelings one way or another, let me know down below. Anyways, see ya!